friends, it's Erev Shabbat, and I would like to share with all of you a Divrei Torah for this parasha, Bayakel Pekude. <coughs> we will not be together in the shul, but we could share Divrei Torah for Shabbat, Bezat Hashem. So there's a pasuk, we know this week's parasha is the completion of the Mishkan. So the pasuk tells us that Ben Israel was thrilled about it, and when it was the most successful financial campaign, uh, uh, fundraising for the Mishkan. And Akadot Baruch Hu asked Moshe to, to ask Ben Israel to bring money, and they did. The pasuk says, Ish ve'isha al ya'asu od melachali trumat kodesh Every man and woman should stop doing any work for the Melechet for the Tumat HaKosh, bringing any uh, thing to Bet HaMikdash, because they had everything uh, covered. And the people stopped from bringing, they held back from bringing, to be more specific. The work was sufficient. To everything that was needed, and there was extra. So we see this uh, incredible Jewish people who came uh, forward uh, and uh, they gave more than they were uh, asked to give and uh, Moshe had to stop them actually from bringing more. This is incredible. This is a word that we said is called holding, held back, holding back. The people were held back from bringing. Uh, Rashi has to explain the term. Says Rashi, lashon menia. It's an expression of restraint. Now, in the Torah, mana limnoa to restrain is a pasuk is a word that is used in many pesukim throughout the Torah. Much more common than vayikale. Uh, for example, Yaakov says to Rachel, Asher mana mimech peribaten. Talk to God. He is the one who restrains from you uh, peribaten the ability to have children. And when Balak tells Bilam vehine. Menaacha Hashem Mikavod, translated Hashem restrained from you, uh, restrained you from receiving honor, from receiving kavod. So the word mana is a term that we are accustomed uh, uh, to use in the whole Torah. Vaikale is a, a more peculiar word. And here the question is, uh, the Torah uses Vaikale Ha'am and which is they were held back from bringing. Why does it use Vaikale? It could have said Vaimana. They were restrained from bringing. And Rashi comes to explain Vaikale, this weird term, says Lashon Menia. It comes from the word, an expression of restraint. So why not use the word Menia then instead of Vaikale? This is the question today. So I would like to share with you something very, very interesting and very relevant for now. Rav Bunim Mipshischa explains a very interesting concept. He says, you know, you do a mitzvah, uh, any mitzvah, take a tzedakah, you help someone. Uh, when you're done helping this person, you have a feeling of, uh, okay, I'm done with the mitzvah. This is one way of doing it. Or there's a feeling sometimes of, oh, I wish I could help more. You know, usually the more you help, the more you want to help. It becomes like a drug. You want to help someone. Uh, same thing with the tefillah, let's say. You finish the tefillah. Uh, in our you know, communities, many people, tefillah is over. Oh, thank God I'm done with it. Or, oh, I wish I could stay a little longer. But whatever, it's time to go. And this is just a difference of a feeling about the mitzvah. It could be the same for any mitzvah, any good deed. Would you be interested in doing more? Or, you know, that was enough. And I've been doing it with the says that could be the difference between Ahava and Yira. When you do something out of fear, you do something out of love. When you love something, you don't have enough. You do more. You want to do more. You, would, you wish that you would be able to do more. But that's the end of the mitzvah, so that's it. Yira means uh, I'm forced uh, to do something or I'm constrained or whatever. I do it, but uh, at the end of uh, doing it, I'm happy that it's over. These are two different ways of seeing. It says God when he sees that a person would want to do more but cannot do more, for example. It's such a source of nachat ruach for HaKadosh Baruch Hu, such a source of, of a feeling of, 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 of a good feeling for HaKadosh Baruch Hu that it's an incredible zikhut for the Klal Yisrael. And this could be applied to any area. Actually, the, uh, the Eliyahu Rabbah, one of the greatest post scheme of three, four hundred years ago, 
and he had a bar, writes that the Ashkenazim has a very interesting uh, custom. They read the Adon Olam uh, song every day, I believe. On Shabbat morning also, they read Adon Olam Asher Malach etc. Now, on Shabbat, in some communities, they have the custom to say Adon Olam at the conclusion of the tefillah. So you finish Aleinu Lishabeach, and after that, on Shacharit, Shabbat morning, and after that, after Musaf, they read Adon Olam. Why do they read Adon Olam uh, a second time? It doesn't make any sense. So he explains, he says, it's because they don't want to end with Aleinu. First of all, you add something. Uh, this is the point that we're making here. Uh, you add an, another prayer, you add another song to the prayer that you already did. You complete it, no, but you want to do a little bit more. And he says, but that's why you say Adon Olam, because the Adon Olam is the same prayer that you said at the beginning, and you're showing if I had to start again, I would, I would be willing to stay another two, three hours. That's a tough one to swallow, you know, to stay another five minutes for the song, that's one thing or another. But that's the symbolism behind it. This is the metaphor. You know, I, I would be willing if I had to, to stay longer. So I'm as if I'm starting again. So I, I say the same prayer that I said at the beginning. I'm going to say it at the end because I'm willing to, start, to stay longer if I had to. This is what uh, the Eli Arabah says. And therefore, this is a, a very interesting, uh, very interesting idea that, that, you know, to feel, you know, I once read about the Ravad. Uh, the Ravad said that it's more important the, extra minute or two at the conclusion of Yom Kippur or any fast, more than the whole fast. If you're waiting, you know, when you watch, oh, that's it, ah, I could eat, you know, and you eat. Wait, wait, my friend, wait another minute or two, nothing's gonna happen to you, you know. At the end of Yom Kippur, you wished you would stay a little longer, Yom Kippur, you're gonna finish Neila, and you're like, okay, from one side I'm hungry, I will, you know, that's it, I, uh, that's enough. But from another side, Yom Kippur is such a special experience, you would wish that you would stay a little longer, with the Ribbon Shel Olam and this closeness, this feeling is more than the whole mitzvah that you did according to Rav Bunim Mipshischa. Uh, this is incredible. What does this have to do with our Padasha? It's very simple. The word Vaikale is precisely that point. But the whole idea that we're saying regarding the context of the Padasha is that Bene Israel Ish Veisha men and women, <coughs> excuse me, men and women wanted to bring more, but they couldn't bring more because Moshe said, stop. So that's exactly the context that we're saying. In that context, says the Malbim, the word vaikale is the perfect word because in Hebrew, as we said, you have two expressions that could bring holding back or the restraint. One is vaikale and one is vaimana. The two words that seem to be saying the same thing the Malbim says, there's no such thing in the whole. Torah, never one word is exactly the same as the other. He has a book called Sefer HaKarmel. In that book, he said the difference between Vaikale and Vaimana is, Vaimana is stopping, and Vaikale is I want to have more, but I'm being forced to stop. And what is that? He says the source is from a word that we all know. How do you say a gel in Hebrew? You say Bet Kele. Kele is the same root as Vaikale to stop. He says, you know why? Because when you go to jail, you're being stopped from the freedom against your will. So it's like a person would want to continue having freedom and we stop him. That's Kele. Vaikale ha'an The people want to give more and they're being stopped from being giving more. That's why the Torah is choosing the word Vaikale and not Vaimana. And there are other sources to explain this. This is a great zechut, he says, that Ben Israel wanted to do more. Vaikale ha'am mehavi. That's why we use the word vaikale and not vaimana. What an incredible insight, and especially for these days. Rabotai, there's something happening. I answered the she'ela. Someone had to bring me a she'ela in the house and came an hour ago. Brought me the she'ela and he's telling me, I'm so sad. We're not going to have a minyan. I said, that's incredible. The fact that we want to go to the minyan the fact that you want to go to shul, the fact that you want to be together, but you can't, and it's a mitzvah, and it's against our will, it shows that really inside us, we have the full ahava for the ribbono shel olam and for the mitzvot, more than we could. We're going to pray at home, we're going to study, we're going to do each one whatever, whatever he's going to do, but you cannot go to shul, and you feel bad about it. 
that creates such a strong zechut for the Klal Yisrael. And this is, uh, uh, like he said, this is the bigger zechut than the mitzvah itself. It's bigger to feel I would love to go, I can't go, than even going. And therefore, there's a tremendous zechut for the Klal Yisrael. The Shabbat, the whole Klal Yisrael wants to go. And as we said yesterday in the class, even the ones who never go, they want to go because, you know, my shul is closed. Even if I don't always go, but the fact that I know I could go, that my community is praying, it's big zechut for me also, even if I don't go. But I want to go. Everybody wants to go, but nobody could. The fact that we all want to go, but we can't go, it's a big, big zechut. It's like a reach nichoach to HaKadur Baruch Hu. And we pray that in zechut of this reach nichoach and the satisfaction that HaKadur Baruch Hu has by seeing how much the Jewish people would love to go to Shul, but they can't. May Hashem bring a solution to this great problem. Shabbat Shalom Mevorach. I'll miss you all. Bezat Hashem, we hope to see you in Shul uh, as soon as this thing is over. Be all well, be safe. My best regards to all of you. Shabbat shalom. Nebodach.